My coach in the States uh, always, uh, when I first came in, asked me, how you feel? That was a question, by the way. <laughs> how you feel? You know, I wanted to share this little thing uh, with you. Thanks, Alda. Simply because uh, <laughs> it's been very close to me. I started training since I was four years old, martial arts. Right now, I train on average around 18 hours a week. And if I'm not working, I'm training. And if I'm not training, I'm recovering. <laughs> um, but you know, it's, it's, it's a funny thing, this sport, martial arts. And a funny thing with me, you know, I wasn't born athletic. I wasn't born exceptional. Um, I really believe in this one quote I heard, and I you know, hold true to it day by day. Hard work works when talent doesn't work hard. And what that means is champions are made. They're not born. Some are. They don't last, though. So my thing is, I come from Aspire. I work with the Sport Academy. We cultivate student athletes. But my thing is with the community, because I'm all about bridging gaps, that thing between the community and the elite, the grassroots and the elite. That's what's personal to me. And that's a little something about me to start this off. So um, this isn't working. 2022, huh? So congratulations to Qatar. And uh, yeah, that does us good Um, it's funny, Qatar has always been now tagged on Google and all these web searches, you know, with Qatar. What do you see next to it? Sport, 2022. But, you know, did you guys know about this date? Yeah, that's good. That's good. I'm going to throw a couple more at you, and uh, I'm going to try and read the audience's reaction. Ooh, you didn't know that one, did you? These are bids. You know, we either had them, have them. How about that one? Wow, that was the one I was going to catch you on, but okay. Almost in the middle of it, right? How about this one? So there's a lot of dates up here. And we have a lot of these things going on in the next 10, 11 years or so, but why? You know, what's the point of all this? What are we trying to achieve as a country? Are we trying to become a sporting venue? Are we trying to become the home for sports in the region? Are we trying to be athletic? What are you trying to do? I want to talk to you about today, how it relates to the community more like. So my thing is, let's take a look at something that's written on Pretty Vision or the National Development Strategy. I've read that. And I take from it two things. You know, we do have a pillar in our national development strategy, it talks about health. And how sport affects this pillar is very interesting. Two effects, really. One, preventative health care. Did you guys know that in every three Qataris, there's one that's diabetic? It's a pretty alarming rate, right? Um, so sport can be really useful for preventative health care. But another thing that's really close to my heart as well is how it develops a sportsman-like culture. You know how many good habits you can actually raise from practicing sports on a daily basis? Just to feel from the room, raise your hands if you play a sport. All right, now I want you to take a look around. And keep your hands up if this still applies to you. Three times a week you train. <laughs> what am I doing up here? <laughs> Four times a week. Five, I'm gonna keep going. Six. By the way, that guy over there, he's a cheat because he's on the Boxing Federation. Muhammad Ahmed, by the way, a good friend of mine. <laughs> um, anyone left? You guys should apply to the academy, right? <laughs> uh, but the idea is, is that 
you know, we need sport in our community to actually raise this or cultivate this culture of sport, this understanding of sport, this civilization that comes attached with anybody who's active, you know, understanding, teamwork, leadership, decisions. It's very interesting, right? But let's take it a step further. What's the approach? You know, why are we, how are we achieving these goals with all these events? Well, there's three things I think about. One is the approach in terms of organizationally. There's a lot of people involved in actually organizing these bids, organizing these events. That's investment in our workforce, right? We're improving their skills, their assets, the community, the general workforce. But we're also, you know, we're not just hosting this thing. We also get a chance to participate. So our athletes get a chance to compete. That's the second thing. But I'm here for the third. What's the community doing? What's the majority doing? So I'll give you a little insight. In our academy, we've had some achievements. Matas Barsham, ranked number one in his youth level for high jump, gold in Guangzhou. That's impressive. And for him to be born and raised in Qatar here, that's impressive. John Benson, he was on the Ghana squad of the under-20 World Cup in Egypt. The Ghana squad that won the World Cup in Egypt. That's one of our kids. That's impressive. And we're like five or six years old. That's pretty good for an organization that's only five or six years old. Five, six years old. But we've been, we've been involved in several Olympics, right? And I'll come back to that point, actually. It's still a struggle. Because in the end, we're both school, education, and sports. We have a struggle with one entity, and that's the parents. What good is my son being a professional athlete? What? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> um, he's only in the papers daily. <laughs> he's only interviewed by all the great media. He's only adored by school fans who want his autograph. I think that's a pretty cool life, you guys, you know? Being it the joy and the job of your life, that's amazing. What's wrong with that? We have an amazing school system, yes, guaranteed. We're actually gonna be the only locally developed curriculum that's gonna be certified internationally. Some schools run at Excel, some schools run APA, American curriculums. We're the only like, locally developed curriculum in the region that's gonna be certified internationally, just like those. But we have to keep pressing that point. We have to keep convincing the parents that it's good for you to put your son in our school, and it's for free. But yet, we still struggle with this aspect of sport and being a student. They need it to lay back on, like it's some kind of security for them. We're not there yet, that culture. So again, I say, what's the community? And by the way, um, just to add more to our achievements, we have been involved in seven Olympics. We sent 104 athletes in total over the seven Olympics. One problem though, they're all boys. Oh yes, I. But thankfully, Qatar has made a claim to send four girls, I think, to the 2012, so that's a really good step forward. So we're now off that list of maybe two or three countries that haven't sent girls to the Olympics yet. <laughs> but um, it's a good step forward. And you know, this next slide just, it's a, it's a picture for thought. This is Kathy Freeman in the Sydney 2000 Olympics. This is her winning the gold medal in the 400 meter race. What I'm trying to say, people, it's possible. It can happen. So, moving on, I guess. I asked the question, do events create a sport? Or do sports create an event? I, 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 don't be too rushed to answer. I'll give, you two, I'll give you two points of view. My own and something that's actually, I don't think anybody in this room has seen. Take a look at this picture. Anyone recognize the person holding the football? Raise your hands if you think you know who it is. Don't answer though. You guys are out, you knew already. <laughs> That's His Highness the Emir. The young, smart, but dare I say it, cheeky looking boy to his right 
is um, His Excellency Abdullah Atiya, the Deputy Prime Minister, current. That picture is in the Khalifa Stadium Amiri, Amiri VIP Lounge. Pretty interesting, right? So that tells you something. Football's been around for a long time. We actually have more clubs in this one city, first division and second division, than London do as a whole. Little did you know. So yeah, that's an example of how a sport, a culture, a desire, has always been there for an event, demanding, craving, come on, bring it on, bring the event. The league was formed, the events were formed, we have 2022, that's where we've gotten to till now. But I'll draw on a personal example of mine with martial arts, and I'll go a little further away from home to London. MMA, the boys here might know what that is. United Ultimate Fighting Championships, Mixed Martial Arts, Cage Fighting. You know, it did exist, the UFC, that picture there, did exist since the 1990s. But in the UK, it wasn't known as MMA, you know, it was around, like shoot fighting, like um, street fighting. It had different names, but in the end it had the same principle, different martial arts put together to make it more practical. So. How come now it's so big in the UK? Here's my take on it. The UFC started opening up a market in the UK, bringing these events to the UK, started drawing in a big crowd. Slowly, more and more events came, starting off in 2002, again 2007, maybe a third time. Every time the audience grew, every time people were following, people were watching, they were hearing about it in the media, watching episodes on TV, attending the actual events themselves, what did that induce? I personally feel that induced an interest, a following. It reached a critical mass. Now you walk in the streets of London and you ask anybody, what is MMA? And they have to answer you one line. Nobody doesn't have an answer. They either say it's where people beat, beat each other up, there's, there's a lot of ugliness that happens in that cage. They have an opinion. There's an interest, be it negative or positive, but it's done something to the community there. That's what I feel an event does when we're not talking about, let's say, something like football. And that's where I come back in. You know, I talk about an event, right? I talk about what it does to a nation, makes it a sporting nation, changes the culture of things, induces an interest. So I shared a bit of mine right in the beginning. I'm a martial artist. I work in events, but which one of you is gonna be that athlete that competes in these Arab games? Thank you, Salah. Which one of you is gonna be that animate fan who's gonna be cheering on his nation in 2022? Which one of you girls are gonna be holding up the World Cup the following year in the 2023 Women's World Cup? What I'm trying to say, ladies and gentlemen, is that Qatar's done a great job in building these events, bringing them here. What's your job gonna be? That's all I have to say. <laughs>